So now I'm headed out to a property for a gentleman he called yesterday. Uh, he has three wells on his property. Uh, two wells are 600 feet deep and one well is 480 feet deep. Only one well makes enough water to supply his home and the other two do not make much at all. So the goal here is to go and hydrofrack the 600 foot well that does not have any pump in it and the first thing we have to do is use this camera to inspect the well. We're going to inspect the borehole, we're going to find a nice spot to set our packer, and then we're going to frack the well in the near future. But today I'm going out there to basically diagnose the job, get a full understanding of it, and what we're going to do uh, in the long run, we're going to frack the well and then we're going to put a pump in the well and we're going to trench it to his house. That way he has two separate systems. His current system is a three-phase three wire, three horsepower, way overkill for a residential system, and whoever did the system basically just hosed him, you know, drill three wells and one commercial system for a residential house. It's a little bit overkill, but um, he got tired of dealing with the individual, so he, uh, he called me instead. So we're going to go out now, headed there, it's about an hour away. Well, we are installing a three inch Grumpus, one horsepower, it is an SQ290. It is a 10 gallon a minute pump. And I wanna show you a few things. So basically, uh, the Grumpus pump does have a built-in check valve and you can use it. But what I like to do is install a stainless steel check valve and then a stainless steel male nipple to adapt to the pipe. I then use two all stainless steel band clamps, just like this. Now, what I like to do is keep the head of the clamp on the opposing side of the wire. So when the wire goes up, they don't interfere with this and no premature wire failure from rubbing any sharp spots of the clamps. Now, if you're questioning the pipe, you can get this pipe um, through multiple places online. I do not sell it because shipping would be uh, just too much uh, to buy it from me and for me to deal with. But I do offer the pump online and I do offer the check valve and all the fittings, all the main uh, necessities. But as far as pipe and wire, you will have to access that from another location. Um, Typically, when people ask about pipe, I send them to Home Depot because you can order a 300-foot roll or a 100-foot roll online. Now, what you're going to want to do if you do look up Home Depot's website, it, they sell it as advanced drain systems. And what this is, this is one inch. I'll show you the specs right here. It is SIDR-9, 200 PSI, ASTM and basically we call it one inch black roll pipe. Now some people may want to go to inch and a quarter. I don't recommend that because now you're going to have to buy a specialty well seal and when you go to install the system, if you ever have to take it back out, inch and a quarter pipe full of water is, is probably 50% heavier than it would be a system on one inch pipe. One inch pipe is common for residential systems. I, I plead, stick with one inch pipe. Now, depending on your depth, let's, let's talk about the depth of the installation of the pump. If you're gonna install a pump for a house, a half horsepower pump, 10 gallons per minute, is good for a depth setting of maximum 100 to 120 feet. You're gonna also wanna use 200 PSI pipe there. Now, on a system like this, this is going 300 feet in the ground, you can use um, a three-quarter horsepower, seven-gallon-a-minute pump, or you can use a one-horsepower, ten-gallon-a-minute pump. That's for 300 feet in the well. Now, if you're going 200 feet in the well, you can buy, you know, a one-horse ten or a, a three-quarter seven or three-quarter ten. But there's no sense in going to 200 feet with a half horsepower because the pump itself isn't capable of pumping from that depth. Now. If you want to install a well pump at 400 feet, which is the maximum depth for black poly pipe here, you cannot install a pump deeper than 400 feet on poly pipe because the pipe itself cannot withstand the head pressure. If you choose to install your pump at 400 feet, you need a three quarter, five gallon a minute pump or a one horsepower, five gallon a minute pump. You need something with the grunt capability to lift water from that depth. 
Now, at 400 feet, you're going to have to go up to number 10 wire, where 300 foot and below, you can use number 12 wire. As far as your pipe is concerned, you need to stick with one inch, but if you go to 400 feet, you're going to have to special order 250 PSI black roll pipe. That is key. So 250 PSI black roll pipe is what is used to go to 400 feet. So what we're going to do now, now that I've covered all the topics and all the pumps, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to drag out the wire here. We basically, since we know the pipe is 300 feet, we need about 305 feet of wire. So when it comes to rolling out the black roll pipe, it really takes two people. It's a little frustrating, but it has to be done like this. If you notice the pipe, uh, the natural coil in it, if you roll it out in the sunlight across the field, it will help heat up the pipe and it'll help take that natural curve out of the plumbing. So what we're doing now, we're unrolling the wire. Now in your situation, you're probably going to go to Lowe's and buy the submersible 12-2 pump cable and you're going to buy it by the foot. So whatever you need, whatever depth you're going to install your system, buy 5 foot or 10 foot extra to where you have some, you know, if you make a mistake or whatever. But it's cheaper to buy it by the foot than it is to go buy a big 1,000 foot roll. But I install these every day, so we use a 1,000 foot roll on multiple systems. Now, they do sell um, wire kits. You can get them, I think, at Tractor Supply. And uh, they're 150 foot in a kit, and they come with the wire splice kit, uh, you know, all inclusive in one kit, which I, I actually like those, because you can buy two 150 foot kits, 12-2 uh, submersible pump cable with ground, and it comes with a splice kit. And if you install your pump system at 300 feet, you just buy two of them and splice the wire. All right, now we're gonna check our footage. Boom, our footage is 700 feet, so we are smack dab on 300 feet. Now that the wire's been pulled out, the next step is to install the uh, heat shrink tubes for the wire splice. So we're gonna take these, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna slip them over our wires before we do anything else so we don't forget them. So the objective of the wire splice, if we can get the camera to focus, let's see here. All right, so the objective of the wire splice, if you see that little liquid right there, so that's gonna be your epoxy. As you heat these things up, they shrink around the connection and the epoxy kind of fills all the voids to make it a watertight seal. So if we come over here and we look at this one, what we like to do, you can use a heat gun or a blowtorch like I'm doing. You're going to want to start in the middle, but not, not holding it so close. You just kind of want to feather it around it. See how it, how it started to shrink? We're going to go around that side. Then we're going to move our way up this way and then move our way that way. Give it a little bit of time. You do not want to touch that with your fingers right now or the liquid epoxy will stick to you and be very hot. All right, now we're gonna continue and do the third one. So once you're finished with your wire splice, next, next uh, step is gonna be using your electrical tape. So what we like to do is we keep our wire as flat and as tight as possible to the pipe. We don't want any humps or any raised spots in the wire because that's going to be a spot for premature failure. So what I like to do, I like to take my tape, keep it solid, cover your check valve, cover your fitting, 
and most importantly cover your clamps because this will help keep and extend the life of your clamps keeps the water off of them then we do a little bit of a candy cane all the way up here till we get to the wire splice then we're going to do a double wrap so we're going to make it solid and then we're going to go back and do another pass to keep that nice and sealed up the next step after you do that you're going to take your tape and you're going to tape your wire to your pipe every three feet all the way up and if you see how they're doing it you got two people working it most important part of this is keep your wire on the bottom side of your pipe now if you were to take the wire and put it on the top side of the pipe while you were taping you would be left with humps in your wire when the system is hanging vertical in the well and you don't want that you want the system to actually stretch it stretch out and straighten out to where the wire is nice and firm and tight against the pipe that will prevent any premature wire failure now when you go uh, when you tape around this do three or four revolutions of tape and then you can break it off move three feet three or four revolutions of tape it's very tedious very time consuming but your system will be good for 10 to 15 years and you'll never have to worry about the wire failure <clears throat> Now, another thing a lot of people question is why I don't use torque arresters. Now, if you use a Grumpus pump, a Grumpus pump has two nice features. They have an auto water shutoff to where if you run the well dry, the pump cuts itself off because it senses that the amp draw is low, so the pump will shut off. Now, it also has a soft start feature. So if the when the pump initially turns on, it doesn't go from 0 to 100% it ramps up within about a four second period of time. This prevents the system from like a jolt action and there's no need for a torque arrestor when the pump doesn't jolt. Once you're all done taping your wire to your pipe, take the other end of the pipe and drag it back to where the pump is. Then you can start the install process once you've installed either your pitless adapter or your well seal. So if you see here we have an ABS plastic well seal. This is good for about 300 feet. Anything deeper you're wanna go, gonna wanna go to a metal well seal. Um, first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take our clamps, put it on, we're gonna take our torch. Heat it up for no more than 10 seconds. And we're gonna take our barbed fitting and push and twist. All right, now we simply tighten the clamps. Now when you're all said and done, this will be your finished result. You've got your clamps right there. Brass 90 is really good to support all the weight. This right here is simply just a well vent. It helps keeps out spiders, but it allows the well to breathe air in and out because as the water level in the well drops, air takes its place and the air has to get into the well somehow so a simple well vent or you can just take the cap that comes with it and cut a slit in the middle of it and install it next thing we're going to do is install the pump in the well uh, what we just finished doing uh, we actually hydrofract this well <clears throat> so this well was 600 feet deep and it only made about a quart a minute and it never had a pump in it so that's why if you look the water level is at right here at the surface it's right here at the surface so that's uh that's there because we just finished hydrofracking the well so what we're going to do now we're going to go ahead and pick the pump up and we're going to install it in the well You can just put it in there. It'll come out of the wire hole. Okay. All right, to give everybody a little bit of back history on this, this was the well that we fracked, and we put a pump in it. I didn't record the fracking procedure, but we got 1,800 PSI on this frack, so this well was extremely tight. It's 600 feet deep, and the original well driller said it made less than half gallon a minute. So, what they did was they drilled another well over here see it right there behind that bush 
that was the other well and then that one only made a half gallon a minute so then they went way back there back to the tree line and they drilled another 600 foot well so there's three of them out here and they put a big three horsepower pump on stick PVC down at 580 foot now here's the issue and I don't know why they did this they put a three-phase pump down at 580 foot and the reason why they put a three-phase pump down there was because a three-phase pump not three wire three phase is because you can run smaller wire if you use a three-phase system well they have a single phase to three phase converter box here in the basement and it is also a variable speed box so it can spin the pump slow or can spin the pump fast but this box is over three thousand dollars and in a period of seven years they've replaced it three times so that gets expensive they've spent thirty eight thousand dollars on wells and pumps and stuff like that i come here i frack the well and the reason why we're trying to get away from this whole three phase thing is because the box died again so he's trying to find a more cost-effective way of running just a residential house now the first thing I found out when I came in here and I'm gonna show it to you now so this is their setup this is kind of like their manifold that goes up to different portions of the house they've got a large tank a pretty decent sized filter a carbon filter uh, to try to stop sulfur and then this is their F and W variable speed controller uh, single phase to three phase converter now if we come over here and we look at their filter, this was the first thing I noticed. I want to show this to you. So you see this right here? It just looks kind of like tree roots. But it's hard to understand what that is. What that is is uh, that's nylon impeller. So the inside of that pump is coming apart and it's sending up pieces of the pump and it's getting trapped by the filter. So we know that this is plastic and it's coming from 580 feet the pumps probably getting chewed up by sediment and um, yeah so basically the pumps coming apart so uh, the individual who put this in is no longer around and uh, to change it would probably cost seven thousand dollars realistically to pull a pump out 580 foot put it back and it's three horsepower three phase so you're gonna be in it pretty pretty significant amount of money so what we did, we decided we were going to frack the other well that's closest to the house and we put a one horsepower pump in it at 300 foot and uh, that way you can change it easily instead of dealing with a three horsepower, you've got a one horsepower. And uh, he basically tied it into the line and he ran a new electric line over here. So we've got this electric line here that goes out to the new well. I'm going to take out the uh, transducer here. I'm going to replace it with a regular old pressure switch. And this wire goes out to the well. So we're gonna take the wire here that feeds this to 40. And this is gonna get tied into a pool disconnect, go down to the pressure switch. And this is gonna go to the pressure switch. And we're gonna make the system operate like normal instead of basically a crazy commercial system. And this will be a fraction of the cost. And he won't have to deal with a 580 foot pump and a well that makes sulfur and all this nightmare of a mess but uh I, the reason why i want to do this and i'm kind of filming it is because i want to do a pump test on the well because we fracked it it made less than a half gallon a minute prior to hydrofracking it and um you know i'm kind of excited to to change this all the way it's supposed to be and do a pump test on this well too to see how well the fracking procedure did now a little bit of a understanding of here of how this is done incorrectly this came from the well down the hill and it goes through the filter first which is a no-no because when it gets completely plugged up it, it can't read the pressure over here at the transducer so it should always come to the tank first and then out of the tank through the filter through i guess this is a carbon filter to help remove sulfur and then out of this to the manifold to the house and this right here was the line that went to his garage basically so the well that we fracked we simply trenched into uh found where this pipe was in the yard and we teed onto it and it'll it'll work just as simple now so this will be our new incoming line 
and we'll put a valve on this over here and shut that off because that well will no longer be used unless the system that I'm hooking up today doesn't make enough water. Then what we'll do is we'll come out here with a crane and we'll pull out the 580 foot pump and we'll drop a pump in it at 300 foot and then he'll have two systems that are usable. There's no need to have a pump at 580 foot if that well made six gallons a minute. It's just, I don't know, it's just nonsense. But whoever installed this sold him a lot of stuff. Really nice system, but way, way over-engineered for, for a residential house. So I'm going to go ahead now and uh, I'm going to go hook the well head up and then we're going to come in here. We're going to cut all this out and we're going to replumb it. All right, it's been about two hours and I went ahead and redid the entire system. So this is the pipe coming in now. Goes down to one inch PEX. Goes over there, switched over to a uh, regular old pressure switch. Kept the original valve up. Went ahead and changed the filter and now that's in the right direction. Got that in there and uh, comes over here, adapts it back over to PVC to his original manifold, which goes to different sections of the house. And this is to the old well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to perform a pump test and we're going to see what the system makes. Cool. We'll just draw the water level down and see how fast it recovers okay so we just finished doing a pump test and the well makes like 1.1 gallons per minute so uh, not spectacular but uh, prior to all this the well was not being used because it made on estimate from the driller a quart a minute so if you kind of do the math on that it's still four times the original value we kind of want more than a gallon a minute, but that's what we got. And uh, the old well, they were dealing with sulfur. So he's going to try to use it, see if a gallon a minute is going to be enough for him. And if it's not, then we will uh, pull out that big three horsepower pump. We'll stick a regular residential pump down there at 300 foot. And we'll tie that system into it to where he could have then a backup well. Still dealing with sulfur problem. But um, that way, you know, if that one gives out, toilet gets hung something like that they don't sit there with no water they can then go in the basement flip the switch open a valve and voila start using the other well again so it's been about two and a half maybe three weeks now since uh, this job has been done and I've given the homeowner plenty of time to you know use the system like they normally would um, I called him probably 10 days afterwards I wanted to see if they were able to run the well dry and they did they have five kids plus two adults so that's seven people on one system and they actually kind of work from home so they have their their farm equipment there and they do a lot of you know equipment cleaning and stuff like that so in the near future what we'll probably do is we're going to pull that pump out and we're going to put uh you know a 300 foot pump in that other well that does make six gallons a minute the problem is the well made such bad sulfur that they were sick and tired of dealing with it. So they love the fact that the new well at least makes a gallon a minute so they can live on it. Um, they only ran it out that one time and you simply turn off the breaker and you don't know, wait two hours. The well recovers some and you go back to using the water. Um, it's not ideal, but a lot of houses, a lot of systems that um, are do make one gallon a minute we typically put pumps down at 400 foot. Now, we didn't know what we were going to make with this well, so we decided to put a one horsepower at 300 foot. Um, that should work on 99% of, of systems, and that's probably what uh, we're going to put in the other well that's down at the bottom of the hill. So what we'll do, because it has sulfur, it'll be on its own designated tank and stuff, and because the manifold... In the way that the house was plumbed, those uh, the four PEX pipes you see there, those are actually labeled and they go to different portions of the house. So one actually feeds the outdoor spigots, one feeds the barn. So we're going to take that other well and we're going to feed the outdoor spigots and the barn with that because that's just wastewater. It's water you use with a pressure washer, water you use to wash vehicles, stuff like that. And then the clean water 
the water that does not have the sulfur problem, that will be used for bathing and for drinking and for washing clothes. So if anybody was you know, kind of concerned about, that's basically what our um, plan down the road is. But for right now, that's just where we're at. So hope you all enjoyed today's video. If you did, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.